Welcome to another edition of Living Inside Out Ministry. We've been talking about, is God really with us? In the storms of life, when the floods come, is God really with us? And if he is, how do we know that? We talked about and used an example of a little candy bar. And it said on the outside of the candy bar, there's nuts in that. So because we're looking for almonds, said almonds, we're looking for that candy bar with the almonds. Just because it said it on the package, we just grab that bag and, yep, that's the one, get it. We don't stand there and cut it out, cut it open and open up the little bar, uh, little packaging and cut it in half and say, yeah, I see the nuts now, I believe it. No, we don't do that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that is alive. Holy Spirit, use me to teach people how much you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. In life, sometimes we experience some things like loss. Sometimes we think that the mechanism that's going to get us from here to there is one thing. And we start out with that in mind and it ends up being something totally different, that mechanism. When the pressures of life present themselves to you, what comes out of you is what's going, what's, is what you've put inside of you. Let's take this for example. I've got here this giant marshmallow. I think this is the biggest marshmallow I've ever seen. Now let's say you've put love, joy, peace, long suffering, patience. Oh, patience. Ooh, we need patience. We've put, you've put those things in you. Here comes a little conflict with your spouse. Let's do some squeezing here. Let's see. Yeah, I see a little bit of love coming out of there. Patience. Yeah, kids. Kids are testing you. You said that they couldn't go to that function and they sneaked out the bedroom window. Mm -hmm. Patience. Long suffering. If you're angry, that wouldn't be the time to discipline them because that's not called discipline. That'd be punishment and they wouldn't learn a thing and you'd feel bad. So when the squeeze is on, what comes out? What comes out of you? When you feel like you're in the grips of a vice, what comes out of you? Check on purpose, check. You know, there's none of us who have arrived. None of us. We're all still learning how to walk by faith. We're all still at different levels. That's why there isn't just one church for everybody because you get fed at different levels at different churches. But you should be growing. We all should be growing from milk to some maybe pablum. We have a gentleman here. He and his wife just had a baby. This baby, I'm sure, is on liquids only, milk. But soon, that's not going to be enough, and he'll be crying. And the reason he'll start crying is because he's not satisfied. I need something more. Well, we should be like that as Christians. Shouldn't be satisfied with just milk. We have to grow. We have to grow. You know, every time in the Old Covenant, when God had a new assignment for the children of Israel, he changed their diet, their diet. And sometimes we need to let God change our diet, be willing and obedient. Give that baby some pablum. And then after the pablum's not enough, then you'll have to give the baby some uh, more nutritional food. And that's true in the spirit realm for Christians. 
We don't park in the baby stage. We grow, we grow, and we continually hunger after that growth to take our faith to new heights, new levels, to stretch ourselves. The name of this is being squeezed. We've all been there. We have all been there. Daniel 3, 22 through 25. Now this is the Hebrew children, the Hebrew guys. And they were being squeezed. In the New American Standard Bible, for this reason, because the king's command was urgent. See, that's pressure. Anytime you got to make a decision and there's this pressure, do it now. You got to do it right now. You got to do it right now. And sometimes God will tell you, like sowing, he might say, right now, I want you to sow $5,000. Well, do it right now. But when it's pressure from out here, that's not God. The Holy Ghost doesn't ever pressure. He'll nudge you. He'll encourage you. He'll bring to remembrance what the Word says concerning that. But you always have a free will and you can decide, I don't want to do that right now. And he'll, he'll just be quiet. He won't ever pressure you. That's when you know it's God or it's not God. So here's this urgent, it's urgent urgent because the king's command was urgent and the furnace had been made extremely hot the flame of the fire slew those men who carried up Shadrach Meshach and Abednego now these are the guys that they were throwing Shadrach Meshach and Abednego in the furnace and it was so hot and of course they were all wound up and excited you know that happens when you let your emotions start ruling you, all wound up, all excited, and they end up falling in this fiery furnace that they prepared for somebody else, for their destruction, they ended up falling in. But these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire, still tied up. Now remember, they're tied up. Remember that. They're bound. They're tied up. They're in this fiery furnace. Now, you know, the king, they didn't have to turn it up any hotter. Hot is hot. A fire is a fire. But they did. <laughs> then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded and stood up in haste. He said to his high officials, Was it not? Three. Now see, he's looking in this fiery furnace, and these three Hebrew guys, they're still bound up, and they're in this fiery furnace. And he's looking in there, and he says, Was it not three men we cast bound into the midst of the fire? They replied to the king, Certainly, O king! He said, well, look, I see four men loosed, not bound anymore, and walking about in the midst of the fire without harm, walking about. And the appearance of the fourth is like the son of the gods. Are you being squeezed? Are you starting to feel the pressure? Are you giving in to the pressure? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have given in to the pressure, and they were still bound up. Who was it that saw with these eyes the fourth man? Was it Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Just prior to them being thrown into the fiery furnace, did one of them say, hey, dude, wait, just wait. We got to see God in this mess. Don't go in till we see God. You got it? Is that how it happened? Is that what they did? 
No. Oftentimes, we want to see the results that only faith will bring about before we step out in faith. That's not how faith works. Faith is the substance of things not seen, not seen out here, and it's got substance. Do you know this podium right here? Somebody saw this podium before it was ever put together. Somebody had a picture, something. They saw this podium down here before we ever saw it out here. This logo right here of mine, I saw that in a vision before I launched out into the ministry here in the United States. I saw this in a vision. I had a lot of opponents. They couldn't understand it. They didn't get it. I got it because I saw it down here before anybody ever saw it here. And that's true with everything. If you sit in a chair, you expect, when you approach that chair, you expect that chair to hold you up because it's got four legs, so you just sit down and you don't even think about it. Now, that's a natural kind of faith, but it's faith. And I think it helps us to understand how faith works. We just expect, I'm just going to go sit in this chair and I'm going to sit down. I don't stop before I sit in the chair, do you? And say, I wonder if that chair will hold me. Hmm, just a minute, let me pray about this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that chair will hold me. We just sit in the chair and we just by faith expect that chair to hold us up. Just by faith. Well, somebody had a picture of that first. They had it in here, down here. But the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, he saw after Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace, and they threw him in, still bound. King Nebuchadnezzar saw with these eyes a fourth man, and they were all loosed. All of them loosed. They weren't loosed when they went in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego must have seen themselves loosed, free to move around, alive, even though they saw with these eyes a fiery furnace. But the one who got to see with these eyes, who had to see, had to see with these eyes, them being loosed, walking around, and a fourth man in the fire was the unbeliever, King Nebuchadnezzar. He's the one who had to see that first. He's the one. Not the, not the guys who were in covenant with God. You know, we're in covenant today with God through Jesus Christ, through his blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. And because we're in covenant, We've got to know that when he says, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, I love you. I love you enough more than you'll ever understand. I think about this a lot. As a matter of fact, nearly every day. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I talk to my father, talk to my heavenly father, and I realize that my eyes opened up and that at my most vulnerable time, I was sleeping. I wasn't up marching around, carrying a weapon, lights all over my property. I was sleeping and yet nobody broke in. I didn't die in the night. 
And every single morning, that's the first thing I think of, that I opened my eyes at my most vulnerable time. The enemy couldn't take me out. I'm breathing. Everything is fine. No one broke in the house. You know, when we live with an attitude of a consciousness of the presence of God with us all the time, we will start to notice those things that the world calls little things, but they're really not little things. You know, you can't open your eyes without God. You can't take your next breath without Him. But we don't always see Him with these eyes like Nebuchadnezzar did. The reason for that, we as children of God, as the family of God, we are expected and commanded to walk, live, breathe, eat, sleep by faith. Faith in who he is. He tells the truth. He is the truth. He loves us and he is love. He protects us. He provides for us, and Jesus is the provision. Until we get resolved in that, our faith will not be the thing that will carry us through to the other side. Carry us through to cross the Red Sea. Carry us through that fiery furnace. We'll be waiting to see an open vision, like Nebuchadnezzar did. You know, if you live your whole life as a Christian and you never have an open vision, that does not mean you're not spiritual, you're not mature. It doesn't mean that at all. The number one way God, the Father, leads his children, and we're all children, is through the inward witness in here in here. Now surely Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had some sort of confirmation about who God was to them when they went into this fiery furnace bound up. Or they would have said, I'm not going in there. Are you nuts? Huh? -uh. Kicking and screaming. There's no record of that. No record of them saying, wait until we see if God shows up. No record of that either. But King Nebuchadnezzar, he's the one who had the open vision and saw. There's somebody else in there with those three guys. We only threw three in. Where'd that fourth one come from? And what's up with them being untied now? What's up with that? But we don't have to, as believers, you know, we call ourselves believers. Sometimes we don't stop long enough to examine what we believe. Do you know you only really believe what you act on? If you're not willing to act on it, just like Joshua, Caleb, just like the three spies, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they acted on what they believed. They didn't wait till, I'm just gonna have to wait until I see that Red Sea part. I'm gonna have to wait for that road to open up before I go in there. Uh-uh, you kidding me? I'm no fool. Are you sure? We only really believe what we're willing to act on. If we're not willing to act on it, then we really don't believe it. And then we're in deception, self-deception. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into that fiery furnace, and they were right there when they saw the guys who were supposed to throw them in, they fell in. Well, now that would have put most of us over the edge right there. However, they were still there, and they were still ready to go in, bound up, no less, tied up, couldn't move, couldn't move. Sometimes in life, that's how we feel, like this, squeezed. I, I feel like I can't go any direction. Not true, not true. You can go in the direction of faith. Always. As a Christian, you can go in the direction of faith. And if you filled yourself with the word of God, 
that patience is going to come out. Courage is going to rise up in you. God is going to fill you with such a desire to obey him, such a desire to just go on through, just go on through. Because knowing you're on assignment, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they knew they were on an assignment. And that God, in the middle of everything, because a problem arises and the pressures of life come, he doesn't say, well, wait, hold up, hold up, assignment change. Just like in Joshua, he said, I've given you the land of the Hittites. There were giants in that land. He did not remove those giants and then say, okay, you're good to go now. I took care of everything. No. We are co-laborers with God through Jesus Christ in this earth. So we work together with him. He works together with us. So when you feel like, okay, I feel like I'm being squeezed on every side, make sure that in your quiet time, that you've prepared yourself adequately, that you've filled yourself and nourished your spirit with the Word of God. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you don't feed your body and then you need some physical strength, you're not going to have it. If you don't feed your spirit and you need some spiritual strength, some courage, you won't have it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, although they saw some things out here that were very fearful. And you know, that's what the devil does. He turns up the fire, even though it's, it's a fire. Do you need to turn the heat up on a fire? It's a fire. And then he'll make sure that somebody else right in front of you falls, falls in. And you'll gaze upon that. All kinds of roadblocks, distractions. But what are you going to choose to look at? What are you going to choose to focus on? When Peter, when Jesus appeared to the disciples one night, they were out in the boat, and they all got scared. That must be a ghost. Peter said, Jesus, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. You know, you got to love Peter. He made some mistakes, but I'll tell you what, he always got right back up. That's what we need to do. Jesus said, come, come on. And for a while, Peter walked on the water. What he really was walking on was his faith. Faith has some substance to it. Faith, the God kind of faith, will cause you to get out there in the middle of the mess and walk on the water, cause you to go right through the fiery furnace, cause you to walk right through the Red Sea. The way God works is not our decision. It's not up to us. We don't dictate to him, well, you did it this way one, one time, so now you're going to do it this way all the time. Jesus walked on the water. Peter walked on the water. But in the Old Covenant, he part, God parted the Red Sea and they walked on dry land. So it's not the same way, mechanism, every time. But your trust can never waver. The way we get the trust is by keeping ourselves in the Word of God, keep our focus on the Word of God, keep our focus on the benefits that Jesus Christ purchased for us. He didn't purchase them for himself. He didn't purchase healing for himself. He was never sick. He didn't purchase redemption for himself. He never sinned. He became sin, but he never sinned. Look at Mary. Now, she had to have a vision down here. Here's a young girl, not married, and the angel of the Lord appears to her, says to her, well, you know, you're going to have a baby. She's like, how is this going to work? Sometimes, see, Mary didn't ask it in an unbelieving manner and attitude. She just wanted to know simply, well, how is this going to work? How? I've never been with a man. She took biology. 
So he said, well, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Now, you know, she had to have some faith to publicly go through that. She had to have some faith to do that. Now think about it. That's pretty astonishing. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They turn up the heat right in front of them. It's already a fire. Some of the guys who were supposed to throw them in, well, they fell in and they got burned right in front of them. But they still decided to trust their God. They still made up their mind to trust their God, who said in the Old Covenant, I will be with you, be strong, be courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. So they knew they were going somewhere. They were going somewhere. They were on their way somewhere. They were there to take some land. You know, that's why today, when people, whether it be government officials, other countries, nations, they try to divide the land of Israel today, it's not ever going to work. It's never going to work. Because when God made that promise to Abraham, he said, look up at the stars, look at the sand, that for you and your seed, you'll have this land. You know, when God promises us things, when God gives us a vision inside, that's for eternity. He doesn't take that back and say, whoops, change, got change. Vision's not the same anymore. That is still their land to this day. And nobody will be able to come in and divide that. Nobody. Not going to happen. There's some things in the Word of God that God has said, this is the way it's going to be, and I'm, it's not going to change. That's their land, and Abraham eternally holds the deed, the title deed, because he took it by faith before he ever really had it in his own possession. God said, look at the stars, look at the sand, you're going to have a whole lot of children, a whole lot of descendants. And he does. He does. We're some of those descendants today. But that land still is held through the legal system of the kingdom of God by way of faith being the title deed. Faith through Abraham, he took possession of it then, and it still belongs to Israel. And nobody will ever be able to go in and divide it. Not going to happen. I wish some of our leaders would get a hold of that. We're praying for them. That's what we're called to do. Pray for them. But we're talking about, are you being squeezed in life? The pressures of life starting to get to you. You know, when that happens, you're going to find out what you've been putting inside of you. Junk food or things that are really going to strengthen you, cause you to look at that and go, oh, that's nothing. I'm going through to the other side. I'm on assignment. I'm on assignment. And I'm going through, and God is with me. Whether I ever see him or not, he is with me, he's for me, he's in me, he said so, and that settles it. That's the end of it. Whatever is in here, is going to come out here. Spend some quiet time alone with your Heavenly Father every day. Just you and Him. You talk, then you be quiet, you listen, and He talks. Every day, every day. We live from the inside out. He will begin to deposit in you things you never dreamed of. Things that you thought were so far out of your reach, like Rahab the harlot. Here's a prostitute. God used her. We talked about that. Almonds in the candy bar. Because the package says so, 
we pick them up and buy them. Well, the Word of God promises He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. Start putting that in side here so you can live from the inside out. The kingdom of God is within you.